declaring a public health emergency of international concern over the global outbreak of novel coronavirus. The main reason for this declaration is not because of what is happening in China, but because of what is happening in other countries. Our greatest concern is the potential for the virus to spread to countries with weaker health systems and which are ill prepared to deal with it. Decided that we should declare a state of emergency. Inver, what does the global situation look like at the moment? As far as the number of countries are concerned, 129 countries, we do believe that Namibia has not yet been included. I must announce this morning that COVID-19 has reached our country. And this morning, the Minister of Health and Social Services, Dr. Kalumbu Shangula, did announce in the nation that we have two confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Namibia. <laughs> President Harvey Geinkop this afternoon announced that as from a Tuesday, we will be moving to stage two. July 2020, tragedy struck the residents of Twala Loka after a fire raged through the informal settlement, taking the life of a toddler and destroying 153 homes. At 7.30 the evening, the Wavish Bay municipal sirens went off three times, indicating a fire. Anyone traveling on the B2 road between Wavish Bay and Swakopmund would have seen the massive flames engulfing Twala Loka. The Wolfish Bay Fire Brigade was battling tirelessly to get the flames under control while residents were trying to salvage any of their belongings from their shacks. About three hours after the fire, onlookers started pelting the fire brigade, the municipality, water tankers and the media with stones. The police reservists had to calm the situation by firing rubber bullets. A firefighter said they had to extinguish the fire while a group of onlookers armed with fungus and okapis surrounded them in the threatening manner. Five of the key figures implicated in the fish rot scandal bought properties in Namibia from 2011 to 2019, the period of the alleged corruption. The accused are Pius Taksa Mwatelulo, Tamsin Fiti Hatukilipi, former Justice Minister Saki Shanghala, former Fisheries Minister Bernard Sao, former Fish Corps Board Chairperson James Hatukilipi, Suspended Fish Corps Chief Mike Nipunya and former investor client manager Ricardo Gustavo. Together, they are accused by the government of corruption and money laundering by profiting from 175 million Namibian dollars in fishing deals. The Namibian has compiled a list of properties bought during this period. So far, we've established that the fish rod accused paid more than 40 million Namibian dollars. The value of these properties could amount to more than 250 million Namibian dollars if construction and renovations are added to the cost. Here are some of the residential properties that they've bought since 2011. 39-year-old Fiti Hatu Kalipi married former fisheries minister Bernard Sao's daughter in 2011. At the time, he had two real estate properties, but his marriage presented him with the golden opportunity to start fixing fishing deals despite having no traceable experience in the field. Documents show that his companies received up to 70 million Namibian dollars from Samherji between May 2014 and June 2019. After marrying Gasau's daughter Ndapandula, he bought at least 20 properties in Namibia between 2011 and 2019. Their combined value is 34 million Namibian dollars. His vehicles are valued at 12 million Namibian dollars. Over the past five years, 
Fishrod accused James Satuikulipi has bought homes like someone picking goods off a supermarket shelf. According to information the Namibian discovered at the deeds office and through people who know him well. Suspended Fish Corps Managing Director Mike Nipunya bought several residential properties after he became CEO in 2014. Nipunya is named in court papers as a key person used to push through dubious fishing transactions at Fish Corps. Former Fisheries Minister Bernard Asao is considered one of the key suspects in the fish rot scandal. He wielded political power, which changed Namibian laws to enable deals that are now exposed as corrupt. Then they say, I rah rah. Regrettably, I had to live the life that I lived. Want to wear my shoes? And at the level where I operate, I do have a brain, okay? I don't sit on my brain. I, I work. Everybody who knows me knows that two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, you'll be receiving emails. I'll be going through texts. So don't blame me if you're, you're sitting on your brain. Former Justice Minister Shanghala's residential properties are held by his companies. In 2015, he declared to Parliament 50% of two property companies called Coinsa Property 16 and Olea Investment No. 9CC. Olea received at least 4.5 million Namibian dollars in alleged kickbacks from fish rod deals. I told you the truth is very bitter. It comes out very stubborn, it stands out. And you just... On stand for it to Papa. Two former cabinet ministers, Bernard Esau and Saki Shangala, currently facing charges ranging from money laundering to fraud, tax evasion, conspiracy to commit an offense, and corruptly using public office for personal gratification. There is no normal anymore with COVID-19. What we can just do now is as a collective to truly see what works best. COVID-19 also came to highlight again once more the issues that we are constantly trying to address, and that is inequalities. And therefore the ministry, really we are appealing to the friends of education, to corporate entities to join us in helping us to roll out either on learning or e-learning to our students. Learning should continue in all the AU countries. And we are really, really appreciative of your company for having come on board. This part of the print, the print part, is something that was giving us a problem with our stakeholders. Everybody was saying, this e-learning is only promoting the children of the elite and all these things. And then we come up and say, but we are trying our best. But now this is reaching more children than maybe those are the e-learning. We, we, we were working with over 100 teachers. Uh, we were traveling um, 10,000 kilometers every day to deliver the books. We were utilizing the entire distribution network to our uh, disposal. Um, we were using our entire printing press to our disposal. Um, we had to distribute over 5 million booklets in eight weeks and to all corners of the country, to every regional offices and to many clusters and schools as well. Um, and we literally had eight weeks to do that. So, so the, the logistics was awesome, um, but I think the hardest part was the designing of the books and getting that um, aligned to what the, the teachers and their curriculum and at the same time understanding what um, yet required from us. And I, I remember we didn't just design the booklets, um, we also, um, also made sure that we were representative of our country's languages. So we had to make sure that we got all the different languages involved, including sign language. Um, and so when we were finished, we were able to reach uh, people in 10 different languages. Managing consistency and managing feedback, um, this program is, is most probably the best there is. Today we are at the Matric Farewell of Mentuk High School here at Wanderers and my name is Marisol Stoffer. I will be your host for today. So we are so so excited because our grade 12s are arriving now. So we are going to see a bunch of beautiful gowns. We're going to see men in tuxedos and 
and our grade 12s are very, very excited. They've had a very hard year, but no fear because they are able to have a matric farewell. Rick and Daniel, can you please tell us what was one of the most exciting parts of this year, considering it was a difficult year, but there must have been some exciting memory. Winning the inter against Brentwood Gymnasium this year. <laughs> Next up, we have Abigail and Xavier! You rocking it, Bean? Jamie Brains is one of our star athletes. He's very good at long jump. Wow, that dress really complements her eyes. Yeah. Yeah, I know Isaacs um, and Jody Kluta. Who dressed you? Synergy. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> My guy, looking very, very nice, and I like the color. Why did you choose this color? <laughs> Something different. It, yes. Yeah, you know, not the usual. Mm -hmm. Special people wear special colors. <laughs> you're, you're totally feeling yourself, man. What, what are you looking out for tonight? After party. <laughs> Just the after party. Dancing. No, I'm kidding. Mm. The music the dancing, and the dancing, yeah. yes. And the food because we're really hungry. I was about to, I was about to mention the food. You, guys, you need to look for the, the little food in there. Okay. You must, you must make it a party. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy, man. Enjoy, man. Enjoy, you guys. Look very beautiful. Enjoy. Mangwana ni. Good. Morning and welcome to the very first episode of NMH at Spotter. My name is Frank Steffen, the Redakteur der Allgemeinen Zeitung, and this is Program wat richting gee aan die gesprekke van die dag hier in Namibia. Good morning, Leandria. Good morning, Otis. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the very first episode of NMH at One. We do everything under the sun that involves the youth. My name is Elizabeth Joseph, and I'm joined by my lovely co-host Host here, Limba Mupetami. A wonderlijke dag voor die landbouwredactie van Republikein in die boer. Ek... Jochen en Koetsia, and today we're looking at a very interesting development. The hot, hot new Hyundai i30N. Good evening and welcome to the first edition of Careers Bistro. My name is Tunone Mungoba and this is the show. Here at Namibian Sun, touching on current affairs as well as... Uh... Five beautiful music videos in the country right now. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Namibia Tourism Expo 2020 edition. Obviously, all we know is that COVID has had an impact on us, but of course, 
there are brave people, such as the Namibia Media Holdings, that could take or have decided to take the risk to provide this platform, at least as part of the Tourism Revival Initiative, for the Namibian tourism industry to be able to showcase what they have on offer. And we would really greatly want to thank you for that, to be so brave and equally those exhibitors. Now, 100 stands in a time of uh, COVID must surely be a new record or a new normal under different circumstances, but we will certainly show the world that it can be done. So to all viewers and listeners, welcome once again. Um, we will entertain you this week. Um, lots of entertainment going on in terms of uh, we've got the chill entertainment area where we've got artists coming over from uh, South Africa. We've got our own artists, local bred Namibians, who will take part. Now let me tell you about the time that I woke up. Fingers running down my spine, I'm choked up. Should I be thinking now? Somebody like make it quick. I guess I should embrace it. Got me thinking now. I haven't been performing to people. So this is my first people gig in ages. Like, you guys have been supporting online shows, which is awesome. But I don't know if you know how scary it is when you perform online because over here you say, hey, what's up? How are you doing? And you guys go, woo! Even if it's one person at the back who says, I love you, that's fine. I just got a message. I can't love both of you. That's very difficult. You love me too. Now there's three people who love me. Entanglement. This is not Will Smith and Jada. <laughs> we can be the Namibian edition. Let's make headlines in the paper. <laughs> So that's the thing, bro. Like live shows, you cheer, people cheer with you. Online, very different. There's no one there, just two cameras. I'll be saying, hey, what's up? How are you doing? That does not happen online, no. It's like I've been talking to myself for seven months, so this is really cool. I want to dance together. Are you ready? Are you ready? Hey, hey. Jerusalem, I call on me. I'm 
Morning, Namibia and uh, the rest of the world, wherever you may be uh, reaching us from this morning. A very exciting day here at uh, Namibia Media Holdings as we bring you live the uh, coverage of the 2020 regional and local authority elections. We will now show you the number of uh, reporters that we've deployed as Namibia Media Holdings as far as the 2020 regional and local authority elections are concerned. Well, is it uh, almost time for us to uh, have a look at some of the video clips that we've received from our colleagues in the regions? Sure. 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 I think a lot of analysts thought that with the regional council elections, we won't see this swing. We'll see it with the local authorities. Yeah, yeah. So I think, I mean, it's more or less the same, and it's, it's much worse than last year during the, the general elections. Yeah. I think I think the challenge, Danny, that uh, a lot of people did not see, uh, and of course, uh, like myself and many others out there, we are challenged uh, numerically. Um, but the <coughs> even where Swapo won, they won with lesser percentage, uh, uh, wi with the majority of uh, of votes actually going to the opposition. The only challenge being that, of course, the opposition votes are, are split. So, and, and we've seen the same trend. How people voted in the regional, regional uh, council elections is exactly how they voted uh, in uh, the local authorities. So if you voted for SWAPO uh, as, uh, as, uh, as uh, for Vinduk West, for example, you are likely to vote for SWAPO also for the town council of Vinduk. Uh, and, and that is where now the, parties, you know, the party is overly doing well uh, but because it was not winning with the majority, its, it's constituencies, we are now seeing uh, uh, the, the, that being reflected in the local authority elections. 
It's difficult right now for the likes of uh, CDC in Atlanta. I mean, the U.S. is accounting for a third of all world, world cases at the moment over the last number of weeks. The epidemic of, uh, in, in the U.S. is punishing. It's widespread. It's, 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 it's quite frankly uh, shocking, you know, to, to see one to two uh, persons a minute die uh, in the U.S., a, a country with a wonderful, uh, strong health system, uh, amazing technological capacities. Use the hope of vaccines, but just to remember, there are a number of months to go in which everyone is going to have to, unfortunately, avoid those hugs. And maybe because we're here talking today about hugs and about how much we would like those hugs over the holiday period and just how getting that close to people in a situation with intense community transmission can be so tragically dangerous. And that's, I think, the awful, brutal dilemma that we all face. It's a, it's a horrible thing to think that we would be here as the World Health Organization saying to people, don't hug each other. It's terrible. But that is the brutal reality. There is now real hope that vaccines, in combination with other tried and tested public health measures, will help to end the pandemic. The significance of the scientific achievement cannot be overstated. No vaccines in history have been developed as rapidly as this. The scientific community has set a new standard for vaccine development. Today, I would like to share three messages on the forthcoming vaccines. First, and undoubtedly, the promise of vaccines is phenomenal. The reward is potentially game-changing. With more than 200 candidate COVID-19 vaccines under development, the future looks brighter. It is the victory of, of human endeavor, potentially over uh, a microbial adversary, as the TG has called it many, many times. Um, and there's hope with that.